Hello, I'm Dr. Darren Simmons. I'm making this video to illustrate how you guys should uh, lay out your uh, Excel file for uh, the project uh, phase one. And to, to show you how you can use the various uh, formulas and um, functions that are built into Excel to make your life a bit easier when it comes to actually doing this project. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. So uh, if you look at the <clears throat> uh, if you look at the assignment page, you will see that the first thing you should do is have your raw da data in a table in the first tab. Um, as you can see here, I have already uh, put one, a set of raw data together and made it into a table uh, like so. And if you scroll down, you'll see on the left, uh, the left, the left column is the uh, rolls of the die in order, and the right column is the number shown on the die. And if you scroll down, you will see that there are 60 rolls and various numbers of each of the possible numbers shown. Um, <clears throat> obviously, you should not expect that your uh, outcomes will look exactly like this, but one would imagine they will be substantially similar. So uh, we're supposed to use multiple tabs in Excel in order to organize the data better. So before, so to do that, we're going to need to make use of this little bit of information here. And we'll have to start by renaming the first tab here, because if you look in the assignment, uh, the assignment document, you'll see that it says the first tab should be made named raw data. And it is actually important um, <clears throat> that the uh, tab names are, um, <clears throat> are the tab names be what uh, be very specific. So again, in order to actually change this, you just have to uh, put the cursor on it, double click it, and then type in the new tab name that you want. Now, we're going to want there to be multiple tabs, which means we're going to need to create uh, more tabs, which is what this little icon here is for. It's new sheet. If you click on that, it will create a new tab. And I'm going to name this tab uh, Frequency Distribution, because that's what it's supposed to be called, that or something very much like it. And then I'm going to uh, just do some housekeeping here. Uh, changing the formatting or changing the font and where everything is organized in each of the tabs. So what's going to uh, go in, in, um, in <clears throat> excuse me, in this tab is the grouped frequency or actually the ungrouped frequency distribution um, with uh, the classes being the, the uh, the role values, and as well as the mean, sample standard deviation, and five number summary of the roles. So uh, <clears throat> I'm going to set myself up some space here to, by widening the columns uh, so that I can input stuff in them, and then uh, leaving a space of one column in between. I'm going to start with the frequency distribution on the left, and then the mean and sample standard deviation, and then uh, the five number summary. And I, okay, I actually don't need to widen that set last one there. Let me put it back where it was. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, to get the frequency distribution, I will need to, s to set up my values in one column. You could also do this in, in rows if you are so inclined. I'm just gonna use columns. Um, so, uh, Val, uh, number shown, which means I'm going to have to tweak this and make it a little bit wider than that because that didn't quite fit. So I'll make it 130. And to pair this up, I'll make that 130 as well. So the number shown is the number shown on the die. So that will be the numbers one, two, three, four, five, and six. And uh, what goes next is the frequency. How many times these numbers are shown on the dice? Um, <clears throat> now, in order to do this, I'm not gonna go back through and count every single one of the, um, 
the roles that were ones or twos or threes or fours or fives or sixes by hand. Instead, I'm going to use a function in Excel to do that for me. Uh, to do that, um, that function, by the way, is called count if. So uh, whenever you want to use a function in Excel, uh, you highlight the cell you want to want to put the function in, and then you type equals, and then you're going to need to use the name of the function. So the name of the function is count if. And you'll see if you put parenthesis there, it says range and it says criteria. Now, uh, I'm gonna be referencing the, uh, the range in the other tab. So the range, to get that, I'm gonna click on the tab that I'm interested in, which is the raw data tab. And then I'm going to click here on five and then click, uh, oops. And tab down, uh, page down, page down, page down, all the way to the bottom here. <clears throat> uh, that is the range that I want, the range of my actual data. So if I go here, you can see that what this is now showing me here, that it's going to go in that, in that cell in the spreadsheet on, on the frequency distribution page here is, see, uh, single quote, raw data, close, close single quote, exclamation mark, and then the, the, the range that I want, B2 to B61. So this is how you would actually reference other sheets rather than just the one that you're, you're currently using, <clears throat> uh, other, other tabs here. Um, so I'm gonna go back here up to the, the count if function in the, the little formula bar here, and I'm gonna hit a comma because the next thing I need it to, uh, the, so the range is what cells I want it to count something in, and the criteria is what I want it to count. So uh, this is going to be the number one in this case. I want it to count the number of ones that show up in that column that I just referenced there. So if I hit enter, uh, you'll see it jump me back to the, uh, the second tab here, and it shows that there are 15 ones that show up in uh, the, <clears throat> excuse me, in the, uh, the, the roles, my list of roles. And again, here's the equals count if raw data B2 to B61 and then one. So what I'm gonna do here now is I'm gonna highlight this and I'm gonna copy it so that I don't have to keep typing it out over and over and over again. I'm gonna hit escape. So here I'm going to put a, a control V, so that's paste, but I'm gonna change the criteria because I'm, now I'm interested in how many twos there were. And then here, I'm gonna also do, I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm gonna change the criteria to three. And then four. And then five. And last but not least, six. And there we go. So I'm gonna throw in a bit here at the bottom. Uh, where it shows totals, and I'm just gonna make that bold and make that bold. And this is going to be equal sum. So I'm gonna have it add up all of the, uh, all of the frequencies that we've seen so, that we have so far, just to make sure uh, as a sanity check that I covered all 60 of the die rolls. So this is gonna be sum, uh, the number in cell B2 colon, that gets you the range, the number in cell B7 have it add up all of those things for me and I do get 60 which is what I should get uh, fortunately so that's uh, passes the sanity test so last thing I'm going to do before I move on to the next bit here is to uh, make this into a uh, kind of a nicer looking table and to do that uh, I'm going I am going to highlight this whole thing like that. Uh, the way I did it, I, the other way to do it in this case was to hit control shift home, which would move everything back up to the upper left. But uh, at any rate, I've got this highlighted. Now, if I put my cursor over this and right click, you will see that among other things in this drop down menu that shows up is a thing called format cells, which is what I want to do here. I'm going to try to make this look a little bit more like a table. And to do that, I'm going to create a border. Now you don't have to create a border exactly the way that I am doing so here. This is just how I'm choosing to do it. So I'm gonna have the outline be a thick black line. And I'm also going to put a thinner black line, uh, but thicker than what you see there, 
on the inside. Now, if I do this, what I get is something that looks like that. And actually, now that I think about it, I want to I want to throw in one additional bit here and make the uh, the bottom of that a little bit thicker because the totals aren't really part of the the um, uh, the frequency distribution. So lastly, last thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to change the color of the background in this case, just to make it a little bit easier to see. So I'm going to change the background to, how about red? Let's make that red. And it kind of makes the, 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 the black text, I'm going to widen this just a little bit more to make it a little bit easier to read. And uh, the black text there is a little bit harder to read as well. So I'm going to change the color of the text using this bit here. I'm going to make the text white. And now that's a little bit easier to read. And I'm going to do a similar thing down here. Uh, but I'm going to change the, the fill color to green. And again, I'm going to change the text color to white. <clears throat> so there is our frequency distribution. The next thing we're going to need are the uh, standard deviation, or excuse me, the mean and the sample standard deviations and then the five number summary. So I'm gonna put uh, the, the mean here in this column. I'm going to put the sample standard deviation in this column and now I'm gonna have to make this wider uh, just to fit all this in. So that's 170 just for uniformity's sake, I'm going to make this one 170 as well. Uh, <clears throat> mean and sample standard deviation, and also population standard deviation, if you're interested in it, are uh, all function, are both functions that uh, Excel can do as well. So I'm going to call those functions. Um, for mean, however, the, the function isn't called mean, it's called average. Now remember, I need to refer to the uh, the average of the raw data. So uh, I have to tell it which sheet to reference uh, by again putting the, the the sheet name in single quotes followed by an exclamation mark, and then uh, a comma. Oh, whoops! No, I got to tell it where. <laughs> sorry, I have to tell it where where it's looking. And where it's looking is in the the row uh, B or the, the column B, B column from uh, entry number two, cell number two to cell number 61. And if I do that, it tells me that the average, the mean uh, of that, of the die rolls in this case was 3.383, looks like 383 repeating. I can do something similar for the standard deviation, the sample standard deviation. Uh, the function here is called stdev.s, and let me backspace this here just so you can see here. Uh, SP, uh, you see that the standard deviation function has two variants. So there's stdevp and stdevs. stdevp is the population standard deviation. stdevs is the sample standard deviation. And the latter is the one that we want here. And what's gonna go in here is the same thing that went into the bit for mean. So I have to tell it that I'm referencing, again, the other, the other uh, tab, raw data. So raw data goes in single straight quotes, followed by an exclamation mark, and then the range of the cells in which the data can be found, which in my case was B2, again, through B61. <clears throat> if I do that, it tells me that the sample standard deviation was about 1.8603049388. If I made this this ta uh, this uh, column wider, it would give me more de uh, decimal places. But that's what our standard deviation looks like. So again, like I did with uh, the table over here, I'm going to make this look a little bit more like a table by highlighting it and then formatting the cells such that there is a thick black outline and a thinner in inside cells. And I'm also going to color uh, the mean. Oops, I don't, uh, that I can just do up here. Uh, let's make the background uh, blue and the text white for readability. And for the standard deviation, let's make the background yellow. Why not? And black text is perfectly readable there. 
Again, the colors I'm using here are just my own personal choices. Feel free to use whatever color you want. <clears throat> so the next thing, the last thing we need on this in this menu is the five number summary. So it looks like I'm gonna have to widen this a bit as well. Let's make it once that's still not wide enough. Let's make it 200. Okay. Uh, so you may recall that the five number summary consists of the minimum, the, uh, <clears throat> the first quartile, the median or second quartile, the third quartile, and the maximum. So I'm going to do those in order. And again, uh, these are, there's no specific function in Excel that will spit out the five number summary by itself, but it does have functions that you can use to calculate the min, the max, the median, and the other two quartiles, which we'll see here in a moment. So the minimum is a uh, function for that is just called min. And again, I have to reference the other, uh, the other tab here. So that is tab raw data. And uh, the, the data runs from B2 to B61. Unsurprisingly, the minimum, uh, oops, sorry, I need to be a little bit more careful here. So I'm going to do that again, but uh, first thing I'm going to label what I'm getting here. So minimum. <clears throat> and there I will post the min equals, equals min, etc. So the minimum, unsurprisingly, is one. Next is the first quartile. So this, uh, the function for quartiles, first, second, third, or fourth, uh, first, second, or third, excuse me, is quartile. It's just quartile. Um, you see here it asks for array. When that just tells you, that just, that just means where, where do you want the data from? So uh, again, it's uh, in the raw data sheet from B2 to B61. And then the second thing you have to ask, it needs, needs you to give is the quartile, is which quartile? So this is the first quartile, so that's number one. So 1.75 is the first quartile of my data. So the median is next. Second, median and the second quartile are the same thing. The function for median, you can get it using quartile if you put the Q, second, the two, two for the quartile number, but you can also get it with just the median. And again, uh, the set of numbers is as it has before, raw data B2 through B61. So the median is three and a half which is exactly what I would hope it would be. Um, that's, that's what it should be if you're rolling a six-sided die. That's the, that's the average. Again, we're obviously the, 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 the average was a little bit less than that uh, when we actually did this, but you know, your, your data might not look, not, might, excuse me, your data might not be exactly like this, but they should be reasonably similar. The third quartile is what is next in the um, five number summary. So quartile is the function I need. And again, I have to reference the raw data tab in B2 through B61. Oh, and then I need to tell it that I want the third quartile. <clears throat> so in my case, the third quartile was five. Lastly, uh, we need the maximum. And the function for that is just called max. Again, I need to tell it that I'm referencing the raw data tab uh, by putting raw data in single quotes followed by an exclamation mark, and then the data range B2 to B61. And so the maximum is six. Uh, once again, I'm going to uh, try to highlight this and make it look a little, whoops, that was not what I meant to do, sorry. Ooh, this doesn't want to go away. Yeah, sorry, there was a comment. I accidentally threw in a comment, I think. So I didn't mean to do that. So here we go. Let's try this again. Uh, format the cells. So again, I'm gonna use that thick, thicker outline and thinner inside here. I'm also going to change colors here. Um, I guess five number summary will be purple. That's basically the only 
thing I haven't used yet. And then, so minimum, whoops, sorry. Minimum, let's make the background, let's go back to red, I guess, with white text. Uh, yellow here, uh, not yellow text, whoops, sorry. Uh, yellow background, uh, orange background, um, blue background, lighter blue background, and then uh, I need green background, and let's make that text white for readability's sake. <clears throat> now again, color coding things like this, not absolutely necessary, but it does aid in the interpretation of the data. Okay, so that covers uh, the um, the second tab, frequency distribution tab. The next thing, the next tab we're going to mean, be making is the tab of uh, graphical representations of the data. So I need to go back down here, get a new sheet. I'm going to rename it uh, data visualizations or something like that, or graphical representations. Now for this, we're going to need to uh, make charts and to insert charts, uh, you actually have to use the insert bit here and then uh, charts. Uh, sorry, uh, you don't need the recommended one. So here is a, I'm going to need to edit this. Select data. Okay, so I need to reference uh, the frequency distribution tab and then I need to I need to go back here real quick. Uh, what I want is all of that. Um, so here we go. Let's, let's just clear all this out and do this over again. So cancel. I'm going to go back here. Uh, selecting data. I'm going to click on frequency distribution because that's what I'm, I'm making a bar graph here. So that's the data I want. And what are we doing? Ah, I see what it's doing. Okay, so let me re-edit. Uh, you reselect the data and clear everything. So I do want data from here. That's all I really want. Let's, there we go. That's better. Now, so that's a bar graph. That's our bar graph of the die rolls. Um, so I need to add a few bits of information to this. First off, I need to title it. Um, die rolls, I guess would be a decent title. Now I'm going to right click in here because I, or no, not right click in here. I need to add chart elements because I'm going to add titles to both the horizontal and vertical axes. So for the horizontal axis, um, I want number shown on die. And for the vertical axis, I want frequency. And that, I'm going to stretch this out a little bit so that it covers a little, uh, a little nicer region here. And there we go. There is our bar graph of the die rolls. Now, we aren't done here. Actually, let me stretch this, stretch this a little bit more. We aren't done with this slide, though, because we're supposed to include a, um, <clears throat> excuse me, a, um, a box plot and then the, we, we have the option of also including a, uh, a pie chart. So uh, I'm going to throw the pie chart in here. So to do that I'm going to need to include a pie chart uh, which I will move up here 
next to this, stretch it down, and I'll need to select the data. So right click on this and find select data. And I can click on frequency distribution and the data I want are the frequencies, like so. Now I do need to change the title, let die rolls. And I also want the legend on the right, personally. That's just me personally. I, you can put your legend wherever you want it. Um, you can see it, it automatically color codes each of the, the roll values. And you can see that the legend here is um, it's good. I'd like it a little bit, I'm gonna make it a bit bigger so that it's, oops, I guess maybe not like that. Make it, make it a little bit bigger so it's a little bit easier to see. Uh, with a pie chart, there aren't any axes to label, so we don't have to worry about that. But you can see that. Um, why don't we change this color to... Let's see if we can change this color specifically to uh, red. Oh, no. Uh, let's undo that. <laughs> no, it's specifically this one that I'd like to, to change. Vary colors by slice. Let's see if we can change that one to red. Yeah, there we go. That's a little bit easier. That way every single color is pretty clearly distinct. And this one, I'm gonna make it a little bit of a brighter green, if you don't mind. And yeah, that should be fine. It's important when you're creating a graph like this to make sure that um, <clears throat> all of your colors are easily distinguishable if you're using colors to describe the, um, uh, excuse me, if you're using colors to describe the, uh, the, the roles. You can kind of see from this, as you can see from the bar graph, that in my data, we got an inordinately large number of ones, uh, which that's a thing that can happen. So there is one last thing that needs to go on this slide, and I'm gonna actually have to scroll this down a bit to fit it on here. Uh, and that is a, um, <clears throat> a um, excuse me, a uh, box plot. And for that, uh, I think we have to go in here. Uh, to remember exactly where we can find the box plot. No. No. Ah, there it is. It's under histogram, box and whisker. That's the one I want. Now, uh, for this, I'm gonna need to select the data once more. So that's back in frequency distribution. Or no, actually. Uh, that's in raw data, and that is the the raw or the the total number shown. The number shown on the dice. That's the oh crud. Ah, okay. So I need to fix my uh, my axes here. <laughs> um. Uh, that's not what I want. Like that. Reset to match style, no. Okay, so. The axes do not want to. The axes do not want to play nice. So let me move this over here for a moment and stretch it a little bit.
Okay, so in order to fix the axes, I need to double click on the, or the vertical axis, just to double click on it and it'll let, it'll let me change the bounds. So the minimum uh, should be uh, zero and the maximum should be seven. So go one click beyond what we're supposed to see here. And I need to change the type. As it's not playing. It's not what it's supposed to do. Okay, so uh, having run through uh, some problems there, I figured out how to get this to do what I want, which doesn't really, which is like so. Uh, I'm gonna go back to uh, the tab of raw data. I'm gonna highlight the actual die rolls and I'm gonna go to insert, uh, go here to histogram and select box and whisker. Um, now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna cut this because this is not the slot, the tab that it's supposed to be on. I'm gonna go over here to the data visualizations tab and I'm going to paste it. And I'm gonna scroll down a little bit so I can mess with this a, a, a bit here. So first off, I'm gonna stretch it like so need to rename it uh, the chart title uh, whoops sorry the chart title uh, again should be it doesn't want to cooperate with me for some reason there we go the chart title will be uh, die rolls and yet again and in this case well we don't actually need uh, the or excuse me, the horizontal axis labeled here. But what I do want to do is include uh, data labels on the, let's say on the right. And one other thing I want to do is uh, change the fill here to, well, just get rid of it so that it makes it a little bit easier to read. And the outline I'm going to change to black. So right there you can see uh, the five number summary represented here as our box plot uh, with one additional bit here that X is for the mean. That is the actual average of the, the die rolls as we got. So uh, that will complete. Now, if you wanna keep this thing filled in, that's fine. You wanna change the color to something other than blue, which is the default, that's also fine. Um, <clears throat> it's entirely up to you. Excuse me. So there, we that gets us our uh, five or our box plot here. So that brings us to one uh, one last thing that we need, one last tab, and that last tab is going to involve or is going to involve the summary, uh, which uh, for that we're gonna have to I'm gonna have to show you how to do that. So uh, click new sheet one more time. I'm gonna rename this one uh, summary, or again, something very similar. I'm gonna go back to this insert tab here, but what I'm going to insert uh, is going to be a text box, uh, which is here, text box. And now I can uh, stretch it out. So I'm gonna make it a fairly large text box in this case. And then I'm going to move this back up here. All right. Um, now, uh, one other thing I need to keep in you're going to need to keep in mind about this is the formatting of the text. Uh, it's supposed to be in Times New Roman and 12 point font. And then you're going to need to write several paragraphs. Uh, so you're going to need to make your text box big enough to fit several paragraphs in which you will summarize the. Um, the content of, or sorry, the, the procedures that you went through and um, 
answer the questions that you are asked to answer in the format, namely based off of this evidence, do you, based off of your data, do you believe that the die you used was fair or do you not? And uh, this is this type in here. Obviously I'm just typing gibberish. Um, you're going to need to type like actual English words, um, but that's how that will work. I hope this was at least somewhat enlightening. Um, <clears throat> If you do have questions about how to get Excel to do what you want it to do, uh, feel free to email me at uh, the address that you're gonna see here on your screen here, dsimmons at wscc.edu. That is not gibberish, that is my email address. So if you do have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email and I'll try and help you, help you through this, uh, this assignment. So thank you very much for your time. Uh, again, I hope this was uh, at least informative uh, and uh, have a good day.